You are listening to episode 26 of the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. In this episode, we'll be saying bye bye busy thinking. You are listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. I'm your host, certified coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most. All right, let's get started. Hello, how are you today? Uh, I am totally on this learning journey, unpacking a lot of the assumptions that we have about modern life and how arbitrary and sometimes ridiculous they are. And that is what inspired this episode. That as well as reading about time and what we do with our time. Let me back up. Let me back way up. In the late 1800s, Uh, There apparently were several economists contemplating what impacts technology would bring and what fantastical inventions would bring us future generations, how much ease and leisure we would have as a result of all these time-saving devices. Let me pause for you to laugh. (laughs) Because that does not seem to be the case. Remember when microwaves were invented and we're going to have paperless office and the internet, all of these things were designed or intended to save us time, as if we can save time and put it in the bank. But instead, it seems like we're in a culture where being busy is a status symbol. And who cares? Who cares about being busy? Who cares if it's a status symbol because you really just get this one single human life, as far as we know, and you simply get to decide. You can decide. Do you want to be a card-carrying member of the GM So Busy Club or not? How fun is that? Today, I want to share about the concept of busy culture. This is actually, if you Google busy culture, there's apparently this is a phrase that the people who study such things use. I'll give you my perspective on what I think busy is and what it's not. And, of course, I want to bring you actionable tools and exercises to evaluate whether the concept of busy has a role in your life or if you would like to do something different, because everything in my world in the less stress, more fun land starts with you observing your life and then deciding what you want to do on purpose. Does it work for you or not? And if not, guess what? You have the power to change it. But first, let's take a moment. What do you have on today? As my dear friends in the UK would say, they're like, oh, I've got a lot on today. So do you have a lot on? For the last few months, I've been in this long-term personal study around choice and time and intentional living because essentially that is what my practice is evolving to. Everything, all roads lead to, are you living on purpose? Yes or no. If you're feeling stressed and you're not having as much fun, chances are your life is not quite as intentional or on purpose as you may benefit from. And the people that I work with, all of my beautiful clients that I work with, give me a very personal view into how people live. Because let's face it, most of us make guesses about what life is like for other people. You may be on social media and get an idea of what people are spending their time on, or you could get glimpses of lives Um, by talking to friends, family, co-workers. You may get a sense for what people are doing with their time based on what you see and what you know, but the only life you really know is yours and maybe the people in your personal household. I personally believe that busy is a term for a social trend. It's not a, a word that describes a consistent set of events or behaviors. After all, if you ask 100 people to define what's busy for them, you may get 300 different answers. So I did some research. I've linked a few articles in the show notes if you want to go and read what I looked into. 
And in my research travels, I found this amazing quote from researcher Sylvia Belesa, a professor of marketing at Columbia Business School. His quote caused me to stop and think. She said, When we tell our participants that a hypothetical person is very busy, they immediately think about a white-collar type of job. But if we specify that it's a blue-collar type of job, the inferences in terms of status are significantly weakened. Isn't that curious? Let me put that in, in another set of terms, that a busy IT project manager may be perceived to be a more in-demand project manager than a non-busy one. I thought that was super curious. And the reason it made me curious, this idea that busy is a status symbol among white-collar or knowledge workers, it really aligns with what I see and perceive, especially in, in a lot of the people that I work with. But let's face it, is busy equivalent to efficiency? In my observation, the answer is no. In fact, being not busy can point to better decision-making, higher critical thinking, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. For now, let's explore the concept of what busy means. Moving from the research and this idea that there is such a thing in the research as busy culture, people are studying it, people are actually getting people to share their perceptions of what a busy person is or does or their value, let's bring it down to your idea of busy. It's a story, first of all. How would you define the story of a busy person? Busy is a way to describe how a person perceives what they said yes to in their current life. So busy is a way to describe what you or I have said yes to. Busy is sometimes a way to define a set of tasks. But busy also seems to be a way to define how a person feels about the tasks. If you were, to, again, asking hypothetical people, some people say, oh, I'm so busy, and they feel anxious, rushed, overwhelmed. And other people, when they feel like they're busy, they feel energized, purposeful, important, even validated. Same term different reactions based on the meaning-making that their individual brain offers the situation. And I would even say, again, I've been digging into dopamine and serotonin and all of these things that influence our decision-making that we don't know is influencing our decision-making, namely this beautiful human brain all operated and hopped up on hormones like it is. There can be such a dopamine rush when people have a list of tasks. There are so many clients that they, they're so overwhelmed. They're so, but my goodness, the idea of saying no to stuff and making decisions, this stays in, this goes out. They love that dopamine rush, that promise. Remember that it's the molecule of more. It sets up this beautiful chemical reaction. So they feel overwhelmed and yet they kind of crave it. Eh. I think most people understand or can relate to knowing people like that, or maybe you're someone like that. But remember what busy is. Busy is a story. Busy is a concept used to describe something. Busy does not mean that a person has made long-term strategic decisions about what's on their to-do list. Busy does not imply that the tasks on the to-do list are all necessary, important, or even worth doing at all. Busy actually does not equate value provided or received. Busy does not indicate value. It's a story about a person's perception of what they're doing or receiving is valuable. Busy does seem to imply a certain efficiency. I'm very busy, but good grief, I find that to be untrue. <laughs> In fact, some of the most inefficient people are also some of the most self-importantly busy. In fact, I would say, and I see this over and over and over in my practice, it's so rewarding. The more strategic, focused, decided, and dialed in a person becomes, the less busy they seem to report. 
everything has an order and a place in their life, there's not a rush. There may be a lot on, again, as they say, there may be a volume of tasks or commitments or desires, projects that the person desires to do, but that sense of busy or rush is gone because everything there has a place. Remember, do you know what time it is right now? It's now. Do you know what time it was five minutes ago? Now. Do you know what time it's going to be in a week? Now. We're constantly living in the state of time known as now. So what is the busy for? Busy is a mindset. It's a set of thoughts and feelings about a list of tasks and commitments. It's not a measure of value, productivity, or efficiency. Busy is a description. And oh, by the way, busy is not the same as results. It's just not. Results are results. Busy is a mindset. Which leads me to the practical part of the podcast, which is exercises to help you see your own thoughts about busy. And then you get to decide what you want to think and do on purpose. So number one, get to know your assumptions about the concept of busy. Were your grandparents busy? Your parents? Were they busier than you are today? Less? Get curious about your answers. Notice how much of your answers are based in facts or assumptions. What is busy? What is busy? Is it having a full schedule? Is it feeling anxious, rushed, energized? Is the President of the United States more or less busy than a third grade school teacher in Des Moines, Iowa? Ooh, see if you have a gut response to that question, even in the absence of facts. Explore what assumptions came to your mind in that sample scenario to decide why you think one person might be more busy than the other. Now bring this scientific observation into your own line. Do you consider yourself busier than other people? If so, do you pride yourself on being busier than other people? What about people you like to spend time with or admire? Do you like to spend time with people who seem to be busy or who do not seem to be busy? Do you admire people who seem to be busy or who seem not to be busy? Slow down, ask yourself questions like this, and see what concepts emerge in your awareness because you have ideas about busy, what it looks like, whether it's good, bad, or even when or why it's appropriate to be busy. And notice that it's all story. It's all just a matter of interpretation and perspective, really. I'm not saying that the stories that you may have about busy are right or wrong. I don't believe in right or wrong. I just think there's power in knowing that your mind is knitting together inputs received from the world at large. And you're forming a cohesive narrative in your mind about what busy means. Nothing more, nothing less. Number two is ask yourself if you're creating the results that matter to you. Let's set busy off to the side. Let's put that concept down and look at the results. Are your dreams becoming reality? Are your relationships what you want them to be? Is your health what you want it to be? And if not, why? Do you tell yourself you're too busy for certain things? When you start looking at your life as, oh, there's so much choice available to me, and I can be strategic and decided, and a lot of times that means saying no to a lot. Because every time you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to any thousands of potential alternatives. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Because then you can commit and move forward. Who's ready for Coach Lisa homework this week? All right. For four days in a row, journal for five minutes on your relationship with the concept of busy. Write down if you're telling people you're busy, if you're telling yourself you're busy, if you feel busy, if you're thinking about how much you need to do and you're thinking busy thoughts. That's four days. And then close the week out with three days of setting a morning intention. Decide in the morning, do you want to think, feel, or act busy today? Just choose if it's a yes or no and why. Observe. Practice it. See what happens 
when you set a morning intention as it relates to the concept of busy. Well, I think that's it for me today. What a lovely time recording this podcast for you. I don't feel busy. I'm simply going to move on to my next work item. And you know what? I spend a lot of time with my thoughts, downtime, relaxing. I think it's so important to live a life that you have designed on purpose. And for me, this means I like to make sure that there's always a few extra gears in the engine. Reflect on this concept of busy and busy thinking and busy feeling and busy actions. Notice your habits, notice your preferences, and decide on purpose whether that's what is going to serve you. That's what it's all about. It's just noticing what you're doing and then deciding what to do on purpose. Have so much fun. Thanks for listening. If you're enjoying what you're learning, I'd love to have you as a member of the Less Stress, More Fun community on Facebook. Join me there to continue the conversation from the podcast. Plus, you'll get access to things I share only with community members. I'll talk to you next week.